I did not wear my YSL heels to go to Sonic today. Maybe it's a prime time, but I'm not. Ashley and today we are talking about why I don't date broke stingy or cheap men the answer may or may not surprise you you're just gonna have to like keep watching to figure it out but you know what else I don't like outside of broke stingy or cheap men I don't like men that have issues and they don't go in and correct them like a man who has like chronic back pain and he doesn't go visit his local chiropractor I don't understand why you would do that or a man who like has never had a massage just because I think those type of men are weird but most importantly a man that like can't see without his glasses but does not wear his glasses so that's why i'm thankful for today's sponsor z -Lul. thank you so much to my friends over at z -Lul for partnering with me i've received six beautiful new frames from z -Lul. and while i personally am not blind as a bat i do love blue light blocking glasses i talk about them all the time here on my channel i wear them quite a bit here on my channel they are usually from z -Lul. Zlul is your one-stop shop for fashionable frames, carrying everything from prescription glasses to sunglasses, kids frames, frames specifically for men, for women, to my personal favorite, blue light blocking frames. Zlul is affordable and they honestly carry the most stylish, modern, and fashion forward frames I've seen. You can even upload a selfie or use your camera to virtually try on their frames before you buy them. Anyone who registers and purchases through my link will get $10 off their first order or you can use my code Ashley for 15% off. I love the blue light blocking frames because they protect your eyes from the blue light that emits from screens. So TVs, phones, computers, even when you're driving at night, I am 100% like an advocate for wearing your blue light blocking glasses while you are driving at night. You want to know why? If somebody tailgates you like they do here in <coughs> Dallas, they love to tailgate here in Dallas, right? So if somebody is tailgating you, usually their lights can get pretty bright, but when you're wearing the blue light blocking glasses, it dims that light for you so you don't literally feel like you're going blind. Same for if someone has their high beams on and they're like coming towards you on the other side, whether it's the other side of the freeway or the street or whatever, if a car is like passing you and their high beams are at high, full blast, you don't feel like you're going blind. The blue light blocking glasses helps with that, especially if you have like a screen in your car or if you like mount your phone and you like boost your GPS, especially at night. It helps. It helps. Trust me. It helps. So I have a few different frames. First of all, these. Hello. Oh my gosh. Yes, honey. Ugh. Yes, honey. These are giving. Are these not giving? These are giving. Oh, wow. This is a whole new definition of give. This gives. Ooh, these are adorable, honey. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, these are so cute. Oh, these are perfect in every way. I literally will think about these all night and all day. Oh my goodness. I love these. <gasps> these are really cute. Oh, these are so cute. Look at them, y'all. These are my favorite. These are my favorite. These are my absolute fave. I will not have another favorite pair. I won't, not this time. Oh, wow. Okay, so these are literally giving. Look at them. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow. 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 I love. And it's protecting me from this, the blue light that's emitting from the screen, from my camera. And quite honestly, my laptop's right here. So that too, right? Um, and then last but not least... I feel like, you know, we've already seen these, but let's just give them a spin. Let's just give them a go one more time, right? Right? <laughs> I love these. I absolutely love these. These are not my favorite though. Let me put my favorite on. Well, first of all, I wanted to give you guys a quick tip. So this travels with me. I, you know, take this with me. It's in my makeup bag at all times, especially because it's summertime, but most importantly, because I'm wearing glasses. So whenever I'm wearing makeup and glasses at the same time, I like to put blue marble on my beauty blender, coat it pretty evenly, but you don't want to like drench it. And you want to put this right here on the sides of your nose and like down the bridge as well. Let that dry. But basically, 
Blue Marble Sealer is a water-based barrier spray that creates a light, tough, semi-matte finish from beauty makeup to appliance applications. One light spray is enough to do most jobs. Makeup can be applied over the sealer for fixes or touch-ups. You can use a hair dryer to speed the drying process, but basically this is going to help your, wherever you put the Blue Marble Makeup Sealer, it's going to help that area be smudge proof, budge proof. And that's what you want when you're wearing glasses. Your makeup application, it can go on pretty much the same as your makeup application if you weren't wearing glasses. But I personally like to wear like longer lashes when I'm wearing glasses because you can really see them. Um, the frames don't block the, the lashes out. So these are my favorite. So let me pop these on and you'll see that like resting on my nose I'm not getting like that crease that you would normally get when you wear glasses and they like rest on your nose right here I don't know if you guys can see that but I'm not getting that crease I guess because I'm talking about broke stingy and cheap men hit dogs are out there hollering right now but I'm done <laughs> oh I'm so corny goodness gracious okay so let me pop these on are these not giving with my outfit and my lippy? These are giving. They're not my favorite, but they're giving. And you can still see I'm not getting that that crease. Usually you get a, a little a little crease, but I'm not getting that. So there's my tip for wearing glasses with makeup on. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into the chit chat where I talk to you guys about why I don't date broke, stingy, or cheap men. Let's hop right into it. Are we ready to shake the table? Let's just jump into it. Let's start off with defining like broke, stingy, cheap. So these are just my definitions. They're kind of like loose, just my interpretation based on, you know, Google, but also personal experience. I feel like a broke man is one that's like living paycheck to paycheck, borrowing money from friends and family, just like barely making it by. But sometimes he's like on the up, but those like moments are fleeting. They're far and few in between. Sometimes he'll be doing like pretty well or okay. Okay is a better word. But then like I said, it's fleeting. It's far and few in between. It's not like a consistent thing. Whereas a stingy man is someone who has money, but he's like reluctant to spend it. So he may like splurge on himself. But then he may not deem like the women that he's dating um, or people like that he's close to outside of their birthdays or anniversaries or whatever. Like he may not splurge on other people or like be really generous towards other people. He may just be like really generous and splurge on himself. And then in my opinion, a cheap man is a man that is tight with money. He may have it, he may not. And like if you stand back, you really won't know like if he has it or not you got to get kind of close and like see how he's really living to see if he has it or not because cheap to me is like being really tight with your money looking for the the best bargain the best deal um and anything you can get for free or with a coupon is like that's the route you're gonna go it may not be the best quality but because it's the cheapest option you're gonna go with that because it's like more bang for your buck you know so essentially the reason that i just don't think it's productive to date a man that is either broke stingy or cheap is simple i think at the end of it all you will just end up feeling used bitter and resentful so some men will try to use like feminism and equality as like their excuse or their reason that they're trying to like con you into the whole 50 50 thing you should go dutch with me or you should like carry your own weight they'll just use the whole because you want to be a feminist right you identify as a feminist you listen to beyonce right so if you're so independent or if you want equal pay, then I'm going to treat you as my equal because that's what you say you wanted. Both parties could have remained single if you come into a woman's life expecting her to hold her own weight and then like half of yours as well. And then some men just flat out have audacity to come into your life and in a roundabout way expect to be taken care of. Their favorite line for that is like, oh, I never asked you for anything. But if you pay close attention to like what was being said and what was being done, you might see that you feel a little manipulated into 
holding your weight, proving your um, worth financially, providing financially, going half, taking care of a lot of things. And some men will even try to weaponize your independence. And he'll say like, oh, well, you know, you maintain yourself. Before you came in some, before I came into your life, what were you doing? You were getting your nails done, you were getting your hair done, you were getting your toes done, you were getting facials, you were going to dermatologists, you were doing this, you were doing that. So they go on and on and on about all the things that you were doing. Um, you were traveling, you were fine dining, you were buying clothes, shopping, you were going out to eat with your friends, you were getting drinks for happy hour. Sometimes it can feel like you, mm, and in some cases it can feel like you were a bit of a target. In some cases it feels like these men gravitated towards you because you do so much for yourself. It looked like they could come into your life and not do a damn thing for you because you already finance yourself. You already take care of yourself. You already maintenance yourself. So if you are just so independent, what do you need me, you know, suddenly you can't handle it. And it's just like, sometimes I can kind of manipulate you into proving, oh yeah, 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 I got it. Don't worry about it. Like, yeah, I can handle it. But a man that is broke obviously can't help you. But a man that is stingy, specifically stingy, he can help you. But for whatever reason, he just doesn't see you worthy of his help. And then a man who is cheap is so busy pinching pennies that he doesn't see whatever it is. Usually if it's like fine dining or some type of maintenance, pampering, spoiling, gift, then he's like, oh, my money is not going towards that. It doesn't, I just, it just doesn't take all that. And that leads me to the point where a lot of men will say, a woman that asks for nothing gets everything. If you have ever been in a situation where you've asked for literally nothing, please in the comment section do me a huge favor and let me know how much you got when you asked for literally nothing and i know a lot of times men say that especially on social media to keep women at bay it keeps women waiting um it keeps women submissive it keeps women just kind of like mm, well you know i'm not asking for this it keeps women from dropping hints it keeps women from having expectations and when you don't have any expectations and when you're not dropping any hints and when you're not asking for anything, they feel like, you know, I've cheat coded my way into getting everything that I want out of this person and I don't really have to give much or do much to maintain them because they maintain themselves. It's a win-win for them, but what are you gaining by asking for nothing? You get nothing. How many times do you get everything? And I do mean every single thing you've ever wanted by asking for literally nothing how does that work and I know I know people are going to say well Ashley you don't understand 50 50 because you're not married 50 50 within the realms of marriage is truly taking care of each other and you're absolutely right I agree actually 50 50 within the realms of marriage is taking care of each other but if you're going 50 50 in a dating situation and you are you may even be talking about marriage or maybe you're not talking about marriage but you are holding your own in like a dating situation financially you're doing everything that comes with being in a relationship while working full-time while contributing to half of the finances some people will look at it as like well actually it's saving you money because what you were spending you're now spending half but I don't really I don't think the math maths like that so let's say you go to Nobu you go to Nobu on a date right so if you're on a date with you know your guy and the bill comes and let's say the bill is hmm, $120 so you decide that y'all are gonna go Dutch or <laughs> better put he decides y'all are gonna go Dutch so going Dutch for the Nobu bill looks like what $60 but let's just say if you were to go to Nobu and it was a solo date night, you would have gotten a significantly smaller portion and you maybe would have gotten like one cocktail, if that. And let's say that comes out to $40, just to be fair. So being with this person cost you 20 more dollars, but if he were going on the same date with you, but he was chivalrous enough, kind enough, generous enough 
to pay the whole bill instead of him paying $60 he would have been paying double that $120 so he would have been paying double what he was originally paying with like going Dutch but you would have been saving $20 so when you think about it that way that's how my math maths it's like what's the point in like being with somebody that you just like really care about but you're constantly going Dutch because all you're doing is like saving him money and spending more of your own money how is that how does that i just don't understand how that helps you like at all in any capacity i just personally feel like your birthday christmas maybe anniversaries like those shouldn't be the only times that you get gifts you get taken out you get trips when it comes to trips and yes this is super controversial but like if it's your birthday or or if just if it's just a trip celebrating you I don't think that you should be going halfsies on a trip that's celebrating you. Like I said, specifically your birthday. Why are you paying half to go on your own birthday trip when you could in actuality like go with five friends and you know you and your friends are going to split it. That's that's no issue. And sometimes the friends as like a birthday gift will take care of your portion so that, you know, you have a really good time. You're going to spend half to go on a trip with somebody that you're spending half to date in the city when you could go with your girls. Like that doesn't make, that just doesn't make any sense to me. And I know for the men, the toxic and dysfunctional ones especially, they're like, I've been on vacations and the woman that I went with, she paid her half and everything was fine. But it's just like, but why? Why does she have to pay half to come on a trip with you? And like I said, it makes a lot more sense within the realms of marriage because I don't look at marriage as like half this, half that. I look at marriage as like 100% from both people because I don't, I just don't think marriage is like one of those 50 50 things but if y'all are dating and it's his idea let's go on a trip why are you buying your flight and paying half for the hotel or airbnb why is that you know and i just think the issue here is things are uneven when you are going 50 50 especially as a woman you want to feel reciprocation but my sentiment is when you have a man that approaches you that man usually approaches you and he's kind of like feeling you out he's kind of gauging you like what type of woman are you and when you have a man who has approached you and who is making his intentions somewhat clear because you know how some men are he's making his intentions somewhat clear and it feels as though okay he wants to genuinely pursue me I feel like the, that's not the time to be broke stingy or cheap that's not the time because if you're pursuing a woman why are you proposing that y'all go and get wings and then telling her you have a coupon that's cute that's cool but you don't have to say that like you don't have to tell her you have a coupon you can just propose hey let's go get wings but i do want to preface that i feel like men should do a better job if they weren't dating so many women at once i wish they could do a better job of like tailoring their dates to the type of woman that they have approached like no shade no tea but if you've approached me i'm really confused and i of course have to take personal accountability for this but to just propose it i'm really confused if you've approached me why you're proposing that we go get wings on like one of our first encounters together really really confused about that really really perplexed i feel like as women we work really hard to present ourselves a specific way and if that's what's being offered you know i do think that's one of those things i'm gonna have to decline i'm gonna have to pass on because if you get on twitter for example you'll notice that there are lots of men it's not uncommon at all for men to say like, hey, as a first date, come to my house. First of all, sir, I could rob you. Like what? No, I'm not coming to your house. One, because I don't really know who you are like that, but 
you know, you don't really know who I am like that. I listen to way too many true crime podcasts and watch way too many true crime documentaries to even really trust that with all the information that I know now. But on top of that, that's so lazy. That's so no cost. That's so low effort. That's so low standard. That just goes to show like where that man's head is at. He could possibly be dating multiple women at once and not wanting to make the full investment in order to date you exclusively because he's thinking to himself, like, I'm not really sure where this is gonna go with her. So let me have her come to my house and make some dry rendition of chicken Alfredo that I think I mastered during quarantine. But in fact, it is really, really, really disgusting. But I'm gonna invite her over um, because I was gonna cook this anyway. I'm gonna have the leftovers for lunch tomorrow. And I have this bottle of wine here that the last girl that I was dating brought over or that I saw at the grocery store that was on sale so I picked it up and so now this date is approximately $12.98 I don't know I don't know <laughs> I don't know how much food at the grocery store costs but I do know that once we get into the low cost low effort as a woman if you accept that you know you'll continue to get quite literal crumbs and a lot of times when you're dealing with not necessarily broke men i feel like broke men don't move the relationship goalposts because broke men especially if you are an independent woman who maintains her maintenances herself and takes care of herself and pays her own bills and clearly has like some form of like disposable income i feel like broke men naturally more so gravitate towards you because they feel like they're trying to gauge whether you're generous or not because if you're a generous woman, generous independent woman, and you know they're broke and you're still with them, then they can like weasel their way into your finances by saying like, oh, I didn't, I'm not asking you for anything or I'm never gonna ask you for anything or I never ask you for anything. I'll never do that. I'll never ask you for a thing. But they know that you're generous. They know you're thoughtful, you're caring, you're kind, you're, you're sweet, you're considerate. They know that about you. And so they've weaseled their way in. And the thing with broke men that I don't really like is that they try to use intimacy to compensate. As a man, I feel like when it comes to intimacy, that's something that they're like going for. That's something that's like a goal of theirs. It's something that they're going after. So once they get intimacy, they're like, woo, did that. But I feel like with a woman, when you're quote unquote the breadwinner or when you're taking care of someone who's also a grown adult and the roles should be reversed, they should really be taking care of you, it can kind of feel like, you know, mm, a chore and you can lose your like zest for intimacy because you feel like, well, I'm taking care of you. You know what I'm saying? You may not find excitement or joy in the intimacy that they're trying to offer you because it's just like intimacy is not even, it's not even on your mind. But for them, it's like, I don't really have much to offer her, so let me give her this. I don't really have much to offer her, so let me try to compensate with this. Let me try to make it up with this. And it's like, no thank you because I'm not even really because I feel like I'm in the position that you should be in I feel like I'm taking care of stuff that you should be taking care of and because you dropped the ball in this area it makes me feel like I'm the masculine one and I don't want to be the masculine one I want to be in my divine feminine I have to feel safe financially I have to feel like you're not using me I have to feel like you're not getting one over on me I have to feel like you're not pulling a fast one on me and I don't feel like that when you date broke stingy or cheap men you don't feel safe in your finances you don't because you're coming out of pocket and quite honestly and this might shake the table but I'm just saying I don't feel like men who are broke stingy or cheap specifically broke and specifically on the cheaper side, I don't feel like they feel 100% masculine. I don't feel like they feel like they are in control. And as a result, if you are the one that's doing the providing, if you are the one that's taking care of, if you are doing more for this man, 
than he can do for himself and you're doing more for this man than he can do for you then you could get to a point where you begin to disrespect him you begin to emasculate him whether knowingly or unknowingly because like i said earlier it can stir up those feelings of being used it can stir up those feelings of resentment and then that can just lead you to feeling bitter and once you get to that point you begin to like hurt this man's feelings and the thing is i think the the big problem here is men need money again i know i said i'm shaking the table but i think this is i think it's the truth i think men need money they need money because money is like associated with power not saying that men men who have money have power over you but i'm saying men who have money and they aren't stingy they have more of a solid foundation and with that solid foundation comes like a clear head with that solid foundation comes like you know nonsense when you go to reach for your wallet or you offer to take care of something you offer to pay for something on one end of the spectrum i have dated a guy like who just did not have it and i think i let i think for me in that moment i was just vibrating very low and i just being on that and being on that low frequency caused me to think that I've reached kind of like my cap with dating and that this is what dating was. I thought like, you know, quote unquote, growing with a man or just like sticking beside him, you know, that's mine, stick beside him. Like I thought sticking beside him was just what dating was. And I think for me, because it was something that wasn't short lived. Well, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, yes, but like all my relationships have been short lived because the the aries energy in me is always just like girl let's just go ahead and go <laughs> let's just go ahead and go before the year mark can get there i'm just like i i'm just gonna go i don't i don't like to check out and then leave much later once i've checked out i typically tell myself like you checked out for a reason let's not sit around asking too many questions let's just go ahead and like take this L but I think before that leading up to checking out I didn't want to I didn't want to leave or like check out or anything because I was just like holding on to a hope and a dream like let's be honest I was holding on to a hope and a dream and I was just thinking okay if I just like stay put if I just stick around then all that I've put into it I will receive back I will get the reciprocation the only reason I'm not getting reciprocation right now is because he just doesn't have it you know but once he gets it then I'll I'll receive the reciprocation and that's what I'm telling myself and looking back you just feel so goofy but in the moment you just felt so generous like it's not like I was Ellen or Oprah or anything but it's just like why why be hard on somebody who's like down on their luck i could just be patient and wait for them to not be down on their luck but instead i should have been thinking like okay girl let's go ahead and just get on out of here i don't really care about the outcome i don't really care about you know the cinderella story i don't really care none of that really matters let's just in the words of my dad one of the wisest men that i know and i literally like said to my dad verbatim dad would you want me to date a broke stingy or cheap man and he was just like no i am not broke stingy or cheap especially with you i would not want that for you and so in the words of my dad like you need to use your eyes to see what's right in front of you i think a lot of times we say that we don't want you know scrubs we we say all these things we talk a big game but behind closed doors you could really be compensated like if you or a family member have dealt with a broke or stingy or cheap man like those mesothelioma commercials but i'm serious like you behind closed doors could really fall for it because you think that you are one proving yourself to this man stingy and cheap men for a fact if you're not careful they'll have you out here proving that you deserve the bare minimum and basic necessities and like 
you deserve those things because you exist i'm gonna go ahead and burst their bubble right right now right now you deserve you deserve to be um you deserve to have your like love language honored simply because you exist i'll go ahead and tell you that right this second it's something that they don't want you to know but i'll tell you that that's free game you're welcome um but like you could find yourself falling victim to it if you're not careful about like you know your vibration and how like the frequency that you're on um and honestly to me vibration and frequency is just like what you feel like you're worth i've carried myself like i felt like i was you know worth a lot but if you have like a lack mindset or if you have self-limiting beliefs or if you have like doubts a lot of times I don't think men are smart enough to see through all that. I don't give men that, that, that much credit. But I will say men have audacity before they have anything else. They have audacity. So a man can see you, see how you carry yourself, and he will approach you with Burger King. And if you accept Burger King, get used to being in the KFC line, get used to being in the Popeye's line, get used to being in the McDonald's line, get used to going through Sonic real quick. If you start to complain and put up a fuss and put up a fight and you're just like, I did not wear my YSL heels to go to Sonic today. Every once in a while, depending on if he's broke, stingy or cheap, he may take you to Nobu, he may take you to Perry's, he may take you to True Lux, he may take you to Bisu, he may take you to Monarch, he may take you to Kai, he may take you to to Earl, like he may take you. But if you show him that you're willing to accept, what did I say? What did I say? I don't even know what the example was. If you show him that you're willing to accept Burger King, that's what it was, then why should he, why should he, you know, reinvent the wheel? Let's just Okay, she's cool with Burger King. I'm gonna take her to Burger King then. If he knows he's like interested in you, he's pursuing you, you all are dating, not in a relationship, you all are dating, and you express something that is attainable for the stingy or cheap, then them saying like, oh, no, I'm not taking care of that for you. Oh, nope, I'm not gonna do that. Like, just an example. I dated a guy who did not like French tips. Don't care why. I'm not gonna stay on this for too long because it irritates me. Um... And would practically like damn near request that you don't get French tips and would say like don't come over if you have French tips okay well you're not gonna pay for them so like why does it matter and that's the thing broke stingy cheap men specifically stingy and cheap men love to have their say I don't like women that wear makeup I don't like women that wear weave I don't like women that I don't like women that I don't like women that do this I don't like women that do that I don't like women, that do that. I don't like women that like to go out and get more than two cocktails. I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't like this. All this hooping and hollering and you're just hooping and hollering because you don't wanna take care of it. That's what it is. That's what it is. And I just think it's frustrating that we are taught to like hate jobs that pay our bills but love men that can't. Love men that won't. Love men that even in an emergency, whether you're intimate with them or not, dating them, what I'm talking about specifically you're dating them and can't ask them for anything regardless if he's broke stingy or cheap those are all three types of men that you can't get anything from but it's just like men love to play this game though especially on social media they love to play this game they love to play the is she worth it or not game and I think that's infuriating. It's super frustrating, especially if you have, again, shaking the table, especially if you have men that are like, protect black women, protect black women, protect black women, and they're the men that are like, oh, I'll, I'll only date a black woman. I won't date outside of my race or anything like that. But when it comes time to date a black woman, where is the protection, hun? Like, there is no protection. When it's time to date a black woman, it's like, oh, she can take care of herself. Cool. I'm not going to lift a finger. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to bring any value into her life outside of, you know, the literal barest of minimums. And I just find that to be so pointless because a lot of men have this like fairy tale in their mind that they're going to meet this perfect woman and this perfect woman is going to get everything. 
number one, the perfect woman they're going to meet is not going to ask them for anything. I would love to meet every man's perfect woman when he meets her, when he finds her. I would love to like line up and meet her so that I can personally ask her, girl, do you ask for stuff? Because I know the answer is yeah. Here's the real kicker. Whether a man's broke, stingy, or cheap, usually the stingy or cheap ones do this. They move the relationship goalpost when they really don't want to take you seriously. They want you. They want they want access to you. They don't they don't actually want you. They want access to you. They want to be able to communicate with you, but whenever they feel like it, they don't want to feel obligated to like treat you to really much of anything. They don't post you on your birthday. They wouldn't post you if you died. But the thing is, they're trying to like do as little as they can, but see how much they can get just to say that they're doing something. Just to say that they have something to do. Just to even give them something to do. They may be bored. You're doing all of this, proving yourself, trying to prove your worth to a broke man. Well, you don't prove your worth to a broke man. You just take care of him and hope that, you know, he comes up with some type of brilliant plan before you give up on him. And he, like, dates the woman that he pitched the plan to. But you stuck through him all throughout college. And then you randomly end up on a boat. <sighs> Anyways. I just personally feel like it's such a scam it's such a trick that these men love to play specifically on women that they are quote unquote dating seeing talking to getting to know whatever a lot of men also move that goal post of like whatever the title is it's another conversation for another day but it's just frustrating infuriating because I'll tell you this it really doesn't matter what type of woman you are I know a lot of people will try to say like well you know women who don't have clear skin or women who are overweight or women who have a child or children or women who have been divorced or women whatever y'all love to like basically group specific women who don't deserve anything into a category but I think that's bullshit so I'm not gonna even acknowledge that because I think whatever your love language is and whatever it is that your heart desires that's what you deserve so that's that if you want to like bash women there's there are channels on this platform to do that this is not the one and so you may find yourself wondering how do I know how do I know if I'm dealing with like a cheap stingy broke man how do i know if this is what i'm dealing with what are the signs what should i look out for so i feel like because my tone is literally so flat and like dry consistently i have to preface when i'm joking so this first one is a joke men with podcasts i think you should really keep an eye out on those ones i don't think they mean well um men in fraternities also a joke but I I'm kind of serious but more specifically just like you have to look at how a man lives his life what type of friend he is what type of son he is what type of like employee he is how he maintains his space you have to really look at you know just like him as a whole if a man has approached you and he's like making his intentions known and he's like oh I'm pursuing you I don't think you should have to open up your purse and I already know I already know when you say I don't date broke stingy or cheap men people are like okay well what kind of men do you date rich ones wealthy ones affluent ones you date high value ones you date alpha males no like nobody said all that because you assume that because I don't want to foot the bill for a broke stingy or cheap man that I have to be going after millionaires, billionaires, athletes, and doctors, and that is simply not the case. You don't have to be a millionaire, billionaire, athlete, or doctor. Actually, I don't think I've even dated a millionaire, billionaire, athlete, or doctor, or tech tycoon, or whatever else. I don't even think I've dated any type of men like that. I do think I dated one man who had quite a bit of money considering, um, and I found him to actually be controlling and I did not like that about him and we did not date for that long um he was not an athlete or a billionaire or a millionaire or a doctor or a tech tycoon or whatever other things you guys like to make up <laughs> he wasn't any of those things oh and he wasn't a sugar daddy either like he just mm, he just had money 
He was a Virgo. I'll tell you that. He was a Virgo. As women, especially if you're an independent woman, you work hard. Like you work hard to be where you are. And I just don't really see, as a 28 year old woman, I don't see the benefit in dating someone who's not at least in or around the same financial standing, if that makes sense, as, as I am. I feel like I'm in my divine feminine when I'm not necessarily taken care of, but I don't feel like the bottom is going to fall out financially. I don't wanna feel like I'm dating somebody that could ask me for money tomorrow because like their lights are about to get shut off or their rent is going to be paid or their car is about to get repossessed. I don't, I don't wanna deal with that. But also on the other side of the spectrum, I've been in situations where I've wanted to celebrate a big win and I couldn't because they like blew their budget for dining out and Either I wouldn't celebrate or I would like pay for them to come and celebrate my big win with me. And that is just, it's a pitiful feeling. Have y'all ever, and this is a safe space, you can be honest, or, you know, make fun of me in the comments, whichever one tickles your fancy a little bit more. Have you ever been in a situation where you were genuinely happy about something and you were celebrating something? And the person that you're dating can't afford to celebrate it with you. So you're sitting there, you're in True Lux, you're in Nobu, you're in Nick and Sam's, you're in Perry's, you're at Capitol Grill, you're at Uchi Ball, you're at Uchi, and you're having like a good time ordering cocktails, cheersing, talking about all oh, date night, date night, date night. But the bill comes and like you reach into your purse and get out your credit or debit card or you get your cash and you pay for it, like you foot the bill. Girl, if no one's gonna be honest, I am. I don't like that feeling. I don't like that. Mm -mm. I don't like that. 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 I didn't like it. I didn't like it when I did it. I didn't like it. I don't wanna do it again. Me saying I don't date broke, stingy, or cheap men does not mean I date rich, wealthy, affluent, alpha male. That's not what I'm saying. I definitely want someone to be at the same financial standing as me or close to it. I will also say what I do think is like really important to me is the fact that like the person is a good person overall. It can be difficult to see the good in a man that's broke, stingy, or cheap. That can be difficult at least for me again if nobody's gonna be honest i'm gonna be honest i think that's hard i personally dealt with men that fell under the broke stingy cheap category and they like hated sharing if you wanted a fry or maybe five fries from their bag at the fast food restaurant <laughs> and that in and of itself <sighs> that in and of itself or let's say you wanted a bite of their Whataburger. They were just like, no, I'll get you your own, but you can't have any of mine. And it's just like, are you dumb? Like, it's literally just a bite. It's literally just a fry. And I will honestly say, I think men that don't share are bad people overall. I think just like to round all of this out, it really is up to us to take accountability and hold ourselves responsible for the fact that we may have had experiences that we wish we didn't experience i guess so men absolutely have to know like what we will and what we will not tolerate it can't like waver it can't move it can't bend it can't shake it can't depend on this man or the next like we have to have like these firm like lines in the sand that we just draw and we're just like no i won't accept that nope i won't accept that nope no thank you nope I'll pass no nope. mm -mm. because the second that you make an exception it just seems like your face just really gets played in and I really don't want that you know for any of us <laughs> so the cheap ass low budget ass free ass dates after the man approached you and he's pursuing you he's courting you that should be 
that should be where you draw the line. Even men who say, you're the one with all the money who make those jokes, that should be where you draw the line. Draw the line there. Because a man that's going to make jokes about how much money you're bringing in, about how you're willing to maintain, maintenance yourself, sorry, how you're willing to maintain yourself, pay all your own bills, all this stuff. A man who's just like, oh no, you're the one with all the money. No, sir, it should be you. Things can go left very, very quickly. Even if you're just joking, don't play with me like that. Thanks. Most importantly, knowing how you present yourself, knowing how you carry yourself, that should be the number one indicator right there. Accepting anything less than that should be where the line is drawn. Do these or do these not give you just like everything? Did you die? Like, I love these. I love these. Okay. So that is it, A-listers. I hope you enjoyed this chit chat you already with me. If you did, if you like the topic or the chit chat or the glasses or the lippy, I don't really know if you liked anything, any aspect of the video, give it a big, huge thumbs up. Again, thank you to my friends over at Zlul for partnering with me and sponsoring this video. Um, all the information that you need is going to be down in the description box below and thank you so much to you all for taking the time out of your day to watch this video i cannot thank you enough for over 400 000. okay so wow i was really in the middle of something i just cannot thank you all enough for over 400 000 subscribers i could barely thank you for 400 000 like i said in another video before i hit like 400 and like 7,000 I think at this point, 406,000. Thank you so, 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 so much. Um, I'm just really excited to like grow on this platform. I've been growing on this platform. I'm really excited to see where we all can take it. Um, if you have not become an A-lister, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that notification bell if you would like YouTube to notify you when I'm about to post a new video or when I actually post a new video, not what I'm about to. YouTube can't read my mind like that. I wish they could though. Again, thank you guys so, so much. Please, sorry, please, please discuss the topic with me down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts? With all that being said, yes, I did change into my favorite glasses and what about it? <laughs> Until next time, stay beautiful. I love you all so, so, so much. Stay safe out there.